All right, welcome back as we continue our journey through uh, regression analysis. So um, remember the basic plot is that we imagine we have a uh, pair of random variables that we are, um, a pair of distributions that we're sampling from that, we're, that are uh, correlated, perhaps. Um, so our samples are the form some little um, x and a y. Um, and we are interested in understanding to what extent the values of x tell us about the values of y. Um, in other words, the, the main player is the kind of conditional distribution of y conditioned on a particular value of x. And the basic assumption that we're going to make um, in, the, in the overall uh, theme of today um, is that we're going to assume that there is some sort of a linear relationship of the following sort, that if we were to take the expected value of y condition on knowing x, that this is, that the expected value is some linear function of the value of x. Um, but now, um, today, what we're going to additionally imagine, um, and so this is um, by way of kind of part four of our story called normal regression analysis, we're going to make the additional assumption that um, that for a given value x, you know, for a given x, the uh, conditional um, distribution, you know, so the um, the way y is distributed, assuming we know a value for x, this is a uh, normal, you know, of course, with, with mean, um, um, of, which depends linearly on, on x as we determined, but with the variance um, sigma squared not depending on x. So in other words, we'll imagine that we have, um, you know, kind of an, an equal amount of, you know, error smudge or whatever for, for a given value uh, of x, but in each case for a particular value, it's a normal, it's a, it's a normal distribution the possible values for y. All right, so really that means that this, um, this conditional uh, density um, has the form, you know, one over root two pi sigma squared, some fixed sigma squared, e to the minus um, one over uh, two sigma squared, um, and now x minus the, uh, sorry, what do I say? No, x minus the mean, y, y minus um, the mean, uh, the mean now being um, alpha plus beta x, uh, quantity squared. Okay, so this is this is the assumption that we're making. Now, we can um, so really the we're thinking about this as some conditional density, but with some parameters that are unknown. This alpha, beta, and sigma squared, and our and our job, you know, is to uh, understand these alpha, beta, and sigma squared. Mm -hmm. Now, um, this is a slight kind of refinement of how we were thinking about it before, where in, so now instead of just kind of guessing or estimating the values for alpha and beta, we also are going to estimate the sigma squared, which is, you know, kind of telling us um, how, you know, you know, how much information is kind of left over after we know, uh, know about x, kind of what, how much uh, variance we still have. Um, and um, furthermore, um, well, you know, well, we'll be able to, um, understand the sampling distributions for, for these things and get interval estimates and do hypothesis testing for these for values of these parameters, alpha, beta, and sigma squared. So we'll, we'll see that. So in any case, um, to begin, we, let's think about how we could get some estimators for these, um, for these values, right? So in fact, we can get um, maximal, um, maximum likelihood estimators um, statistics for um, alpha, beta, and, uh, and sigma squared. Um, it's just the standard process, and I'm not going to kind of like do it out in, in too much gory detail. But what we wanna do is we wanna choose, you know, for a given kind of fixed, um, you know, tuple of, of X's and Y's, you know, for a bunch of X1 through, uh, you know, let me, we, we'll think of them kind of in pairs, right? X1, Y1, X2, Y2, et cetera, for a bunch of, for our, our particular given samples, um, we want, um, 
we want to maximize the, uh, the likelihood function. The likelihood function is just the distribution, but thought of as a function of the alpha, beta, and sigma squared. So it's the likelihood of alpha, beta, and sigma squared, um, knowing that you have these particular values for your x's and your y's, so to speak. Um, and you know, concretely, what, what is this? Is just the product of these um, density functions, the various yi's, um, xi's, you know, with these parameters, alpha, beta, and sigma squared, just the product of all those things, you get, you know, some, some big, huge exponential, but you can maximize it not too badly um, just by taking derivative and setting it equal to zero. In fact, um, you know, you save yourself a, a lot of heartache by first, you know, um, you know, in practice, taking the logarithm first, you know, we maximize um, the logarithm of L and then all those products turn into sums and the exponential goes away and you can really just set all those derivatives equal to zero and um, it's not so bad. Um, so what do you end up getting? You get, um, you get the estimates. So we can think of it as like, um, you know, alpha hat, beta hat, and um, sigma squared hat. So these are going to be functions really of the xi's and yi's. Um, you know, the maximum value um, is going to depend on the xi's and yi's. Um, and what what uh, so what do you actually get? Um, well, so they turn out to be um, you know so thinking of them as functions of the samples, then we can also again later think of them as random variables and all that, which we will do. Um, so this beta hat, this estimate for, for beta, after you do this, um, take, the, take this maximum likelihood process, turns out to be um, this ratio um, um, SXY over SXX. So remember, um, this is something we mentioned last time. Um, for example, SXX is one nth. This is the um, maximum likelihood estimator of the kind of variance, right? This is the uh, the xi's, the um, these are little x's, I guess. So this is the xi's minus the um, x bar, where the x bar is one nth the sum of the xi's, sorry, that's squared, and then sxy is one nth the sum of the little xi minus x bar yi minus y bars. Okay. Um, and and uh, and in fact, what is this? This this is exactly the same thing we ended up getting. By the way, when we did the least squares estimate, you know, the looking at the equation for the line of the form, um, the line with equation alpha plus beta x, which was um, which minimized the uh, the sum of the squares of the of the distances to the to the y coordinates. Okay. So you get that same estimate. In fact, the alpha estimate is the same. We get the same estimate for alpha as we have from least squares. It's the um, the um, the uh, the sample mean um, minus s x y over s x x sample mean uh, for x. Um, and um, and then well, the new one which we hadn't done before is the um, estimator for this. Of course, I'm not actually doing the calculus, but I'm just asking you to, you know, trust me, or better yet, just do it, because it's not so bad. It's, it's, it's a good thing to do. Um, so you get the sum of these yi's. It's kind of the, the thing you expect to see when you look at a kind of variance estimate, right? So um, you get the sum of the differences between the values and the estimated values squared. And that turns out to be a good estimator. Uh, well, the maximum likelihood estimator. Okay, but, um, but the story doesn't stop here. Um, so what is, what is nice is that we can actually do, um, we can actually do a bit more. We can get interval estimates and do hypothesis testing and, and things like that. So, um, but as we, as we go there, we have to step back and kind of um, consider the, 
I don't know, philosophical perspective or tech formal perspective that we are actually dealing with here. So in this, when we, to make an interval estimate or test hypothesis, we have to be clear uh, and say like, what are the random variables that we are actually sampling and, and, and that kind of thing, you know? So in this particular context, regression analysis, um, we're gonna take the following perspective. Um, and we'll see, and uh, we'll do something a little bit different afterwards. But the perspective is that the XIs are fixed. Um, so, in, you know, in the, in the regression analysis, we're imagining that these XIs are fixed values, and we're seeing, you know, it's, you know, it's all this, con it's this conditional way of thinking. We're saying, given these XIs, how much does that tell us about the Ys? So, in particular, the XIs are not random variables. But the um, but the y i's are random variables. So let let's just kind of fix like an example so we have some context, right? So so like for example, let's suppose you're trying to examine um, the growth of some plants in some experiment, the, the growth of some plants. So let's say you uh, example. So you have some plants, and you examine. You measure their height um, for each of these plants after one day, after seven days, and after 14 days. I guess if these are plants that you're probably not going to see very much if you use those intervals. Maybe they're some other thing. Okay, but whatever. You have some fixed time periods where you look at each particular one and you say, how much did they grow in these, in these things? After, after these things. So in this, in this experiment, you would have like X1 would be one, X2 would be seven, and X3 would be 14. And that's gonna be like a fixed constant thing. Those aren't being chosen at random. Those are just what they are. On the other hand, the, the actual height at day one and the height at day two and the height at, uh, at or at sample day, uh, you know, day seven and day 14 really, I guess I should just say like that, so day seven and day 14. These are random variables. These are not fixed by the experiment. These are the things that we're observing. So this is the, the flavor of the way we're thinking about this regression analysis, where we're fixing these X's and we're treating the Y's um, as, as random variables, which in some sense depend on the X's. Okay. So, um, or, you know, whose distribution depends on the X's in this particular way. Okay. So um, from this perspective, when we're trying to understand the, um, the sampling uh, distribution for, um, let's, for example, look at beta hat. So beta hat, you know, um, you know, from a, from a given, um, you know, it's, it's equal to, you know, S x y over s x x let me zoom in a little bit so that i can be better about this font the the point here is that these x's are fixed and the y's are random variables so i'm going to kind of make these try to make these a little less ambiguous and say i have some little x's because the x's are fixed observe observable things i have a little x and a bigger y right so the big y means the random variable y and the little x means the just constant, um, you know, um, just um, setup of my experiment, if you will. Okay. So, so this is the sampling distribution that I'm that I'm looking at. You know, how what is beta as a random variable of my experiment, and how do I understand its distribution? Well, it's really just depending on these random variables y that I end up getting out, and the x's are just some constants, right? So. In other words, I can write this as one over little s x x. That's a constant. Um, the this kind of uh, covariance expression um, is. Um, I guess I have a one nth there for this expression. Is this um, you know x i minus x bar? That's a constant, and then capital y i minus capital y bar. Um, those are actually um, variables. Now note each of these things by hypothesis 
um, is a uh, is a normal random variable, right? I mean, these are kind of like conditioned on on x, if you will, in in both cases on these observations of x, the you know corresponding to them. This is like an xi, and whereas this is all the x's. Um, but in particular, um, these guys are normal by assumption. These are normal random variables. So the, the y bar is a sum of normal variables. The yi is a normal random variable. And, um, and so what do we get? We get that, that beta hat is a normal random variable. And you know, and if we um, if we play around and just uh, and just check, we can find its expected value, its mean, and its variance. And what you'll find is that the um, the mean of this guy uh, turns out to be um, beta. So it's an unbiased estimator for beta, uh, and the variance um, you know, sigma squared of the beta hat. Well, that turns out to be the variance of um, you know this this kind of uniform unknown variance divided by this constant um, based on uh, the vari the the variance, if you will, of our of our observations, sample variance of our observations. Um, now, this is kind of good, but it tells us that we um, still have a little bit of work to do, right? So, if we wanted to get an interval estimate for for this um, nice normal random variable here. Then we uh, we need to know um, well sorry an interval yeah um, we're interested in an interval estimate for its mean but to get to to get a good estimate on its mean we need to know something about its variance if we wanted to use a just a normal distribution to get our intervals and have test hypotheses but we don't know the the variance um, but so instead. What we should do is, um, you know, so we don't know this variance because we don't know sigma squared. That's an unknown. So instead, we now need to also use an estimator for sigma squared. Well, of course, we had one. Did I write it down? Yeah. This is the estimator for sigma squared. So if we knew something about the sampling distribution of this guy, kind of thinking of these as a constant and thinking about the capital Ys as variables, then um, then we would be, you know, we would be somewhere maybe, right? So. Um, so now we're going to think about this guy as a um, as a random as a random variable that we're sampling, where now of course these alpha and beta also are random variables that we're sampling, just like before. Uh, and it turns out, so after a bit of work, that um, very similarly um, to what we've seen before, if we look at the the ratio of this to our um, to our actual um, variance uh, multiplied by n, then this is a um, chi square um, variable within minus two degrees of freedom. So you have to do a little bit of work, but you can show that. I'm not going to show it right here. N minus two uh, distributed random variable, um, and moreover. And is independent of of this guy, which is you know, which also takes a little bit of doing. But consequently, when you have a normal variable, a, a standard normal variable, and you divide it by a chi squared variable, um, then uh, what you get is a t distributed random variable. Um, and so what we find is that. The um, this expression, if I take this, you know, uh, if I normalize this guy, um, so um, okay, so that's my um, so this is a, a normal random variable. I've taken my my uh, my beta hat, I've subtracted off its mean, and I've divided by the square root of the variance by its standard deviation. I'm going to divide that by um, by the square root of my um, chi squared variable divided by the numbers of the degrees of freedom that it has. So this is n sigma hat squared over sigma squared divided by n minus two, the number of degrees of freedom. Then this is a t distributed random variable, 
with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. And now we're, now we're really cooking because we can therefore get um, our nice interval estimates. Oh, and let me just note that if you, if you simplify this, the sigmas are actually going to cancel, right? Um, it's a lot of like flipping and flipping in this thing. But when you, when you simplify that expression, what do you, what do you get? Um, um, I wrote it down so I wouldn't screw it up. So I'm just going to, um, just going to copy it. You got this times, uh, the root of n minus two SXX divided by n. Okay. So, um, so this is what we get. This is just some, you know, this is just some constant that we can, you know, not really worry about. And this expression over here is what's going to let us um, make our um, our interval estimate, knowing that this thing is a t random variable. Now we can get some um, we can get some um, some intervals expressing this difference of beta hat minus beta. We can test some hypotheses um, based on that difference. Okay. So that's great. So um, so from from that perspective, we now have um, you know we now have some idea not just of how to figure out alpha and beta, but um, some way about uh, that we can even test hypotheses and and stuff like that. Okay. So that's kind of part four of the story, and um, there is uh, one final part of the story. Um, part five, which will be, um, excuse me, um, normal uh, correlation analysis. This will be the kind of final final piece of the of the story. Um, and um, I think based on how long I've been talking, that'll be in the next video. But, um, but the, uh, the basic plot there is going to be that we are going to assume that we actually have, um, that we're sampling both these x's and y's. So there's, so it's not, so both the x's and the y's are going to be random variables. And we're going to assume that they are, um, that they give a bivariate normal distribution. So we're going to assume some particular form of this distribution. We're going to try to then understand um, kind of analogous questions of how to sample to get the relationship between these variables. Okay, so that's for next time. I'll see you then.